Oh, what a pleasure it is to be here. I'm so excited to be here. This is fantastic. I have got great news for you. Just got off the phone with my financial advisor, which is uh, my wife. <laughs> According to her calculations, she figures I'm going to be able to retire about five years after I die. So, yeah! <laughs> yeah! Doesn't she have a wonderful sense of humor? You know when your wife texts you something and you're not sure if she's being funny or if she's being serious? You know, you, you read the text and go, is she being serious? Is she sarcastic? Uh, she sends me a text not long ago and she says, what does IDK mean? I responded in capital letters, I don't know. She replies, thanks anyways, I'll ask somebody else. <laughs> Anybody ever had the pleasure of sending a text to the wrong person? I just turned 50, I'm at a point in my life now where I hold the phone out, just hit a whole bunch of numbers and hit send, and that's good enough. I've got like four friends, somebody will get it, read it, it's not for me, it's David, he's blind, forward to the guy that needs it. I'm coming home from a job not long ago. I sent a text to my wife. It said, uh, running behind, a little late tonight. Should be home about midnight. Love you, miss you, can't wait to see you. I hit send. In my phone book is my wife's name, Betsy. Right under her name is my 74-year-old neighbor, Betty. <laughs> Take a wild guess who got that text message. <laughs> Betty responded, that's a bit late for me, but thanks for the heads up. She followed that text up with, what's your plans tomorrow morning? <laughs> it's been two years, I still can't look the woman in the eye to this day. And every time I see her, I just thank you, Jesus, that's all I sent to the woman. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, it wasn't daddy's coming home, lady, yeah. Light that Yankee candle and put on Barry White, here I come, girl, yeah. I know you can't tell just by looking at me, but I'm a member of a gym. Wasn't supposed to be funny, but thanks for the affirmation. I appreciate <laughs> I have a membership I don't really attend, but I do have a card. I, is it me or just is the gym is the worst place in the world? People are angry there. You ever watch faces walking into a gym? They got iPods are ticked off, kicking the ground. I'm going to go work out for an hour. I'm going to lift weights for an hour. I'm going to pump iron. You don't see faces like that walking into Texas Roadhouse, do you? Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> Piggyback ride, balloon animals. <laughs> And the trainers have no sense of humor whatsoever. When you try to be funny with the trainer, it's like you're offending them. I'm in the middle of a work, and I said to my trainer, well, isn't it funny that the word exercise sounds exactly like extra fries? <laughs> no, it doesn't. I said, yes, it does. He's like, shut up and do some burpees. I said, burpee. <laughs> That's what you do after you eat extra fries. You burp. <laughs> People in the gym have a weird sense of humor. They signed me up for something called a warrior dash. You ever been a part of that? Yeah, I thought it was a men's retreat, so I said yes. A warrior dash is a five-mile run through the woods. They light the woods on fire. <laughs> Trainers are hiding behind the tree with a shovel hitting you in the knee as hard as they can. You're crawling through mud and broken glass and debris. It's just pure torture. Speakers everywhere blaring Celine Dion. It's just, ugh, it's just, ugh. <laughs> they give you an incentive, though. When you cross the finish line, we take a picture of you. <gasps> oh, yeah. So all the guys who are young with no body fat and their stomachs are ripped, they're like high-fiving. Me, my stomach's ripping through my shirt. I'm like, why? Cross the finish line. I crossed it on Saturday. It started in Ju uh, last July, and I crossed it. Get the picture, my stomach crossed the finish line before my body did. So the dilemma is, who do I give the trophy to, my pouch or myself? It's one of those tricky things. It's just everything, I lost weight everywhere, but right here, just, you know what I'm talking about. You got a pizza tumor right there, don't you, sir? Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about. What about you and I get a matching tattoo on our stomach after the show? Hebrews 13.5, never will I leave you nor forsake you.
My financial advisor, my wife says, well, you need to get a Fitbit. I said, I'm not doing that. Next day, I bought a Fitbit. <laughs> Tracks your steps, miles walked, calories burned. In other words, it reminds you that you're chubby. <laughs> I took the battery out of that thing. <laughs> now I eat whatever I want. Used to be called a Fitbit, now it's a bracelet. I become my dad, though. I'm, I'm becoming my father. Some of you are like, I'll never become my parent. You will. Stupidity does not run in the family. It gallops. Get over it. You will become your parent. <laughs> I'm in line at a grocery store. There's a mom and a toddler in front of me. The toddler's mad because he's not getting candy. I want candy. I want candy. I want candy. And mom's like, one, two. I took my stomach. I hit the kid in the back of the head. Shut up your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I become my dad. How did that happen? I did something special for my dad this past year. I, for his birthday, I took him to a professional football game with the promise I was going to take him onto the field. We're going to unfurl the flag on the field, the American flag. We get to the game a little late. We miss the instructions. And the woman says, just walk onto the field. My dad's like, what do we do? I said, I don't know. Fifty people on this side of the flag, they hold it. Fifty people on this side of the flag, they do And they're supposed to run out onto the field. And a woman comes up, and my dad and her are on the, the side that you're supposed to run. And she says, sprint. And my dad says, what? Sprint! My dad says, stint? No, your heart's fine. Sprint! I can't sprint. If you know my dad, he's like four foot. He's like this old hairy hobbit. Just, you know, where's the ring? The last time I saw my dad run was 1978 at the grand opening of a golden corral. He doesn't sprint at all. <laughs> sprint! I take off running as fast as I possibly can. I get across the field with the other people. We look. We're supposed to shake the flag like this. I don't see my dad anywhere. He's gone. He's under the flag, running as fast as he possibly can. <laughs> Land of the free and the home of the brave. I made it! That's what we're dealing with in my family. How many of you have weird people in your family? How many of you are the weird person in your family? <laughs> Who's raising teenage boys here tonight? Did you hear those parents? Oh. Ugh. You ever heard the phrase, I love you to death? That stems from raising teenage boys. It means you love them so incredibly much, but there's a time or two when you're standing behind them at the top of the stairs and you think to yourself, <laughs> Now you know how I feel! Who's living with middle school boys here tonight? Living with a middle school boy, that's God's sense of humor, isn't it? God's warped sense of humor. The only way I can describe living with a middle school boy, it's like driving behind a, a garbage truck in the middle of summer with the windows down. You're driving along and there's a smell that's hitting you in the back of the throat, you can't identify it. Just <coughs> what is it? He's home. <coughs> And you get closer and closer, your eyebrows melt. <laughs> you open the door, there's a green film coming out under the door. <laughs> Middle school boys are the only creatures on the face of the earth that you cannot offend. You stink. <laughs> Seriously, you're making me puke in my mouth. <laughs> you don't smell right, go take a shower. With what? Bleach and 350 PSI, go. You've got the Bermuda Triangle stink. It's bink, bink, bonk. Now get in there. Go clean now. <laughs> they don't get it. Who's living with teenage girls here tonight? Kind of afraid to raise your hand, aren't you? <laughs> it's an unspoken. We don't want to upset sissy. <laughs> it's been a good week. She's kind of like a, a Siamese cat. Some days we can lovey-dovey, but most of the time she wants to claw her eyeballs out. So. Have you ever had the luxury of borrowing your teenage daughter's car? Ugh. You sit down, there's 47 feathers hanging from the rearview mirror. Bed, bath, and beyond puked all over the floor. Driving down the road. 
people are staring at you, honking, laughing, making fun. You don't look around, and then it dawns on you, you have a bumper sticker that says, Daddy's girl. <laughs> I took her on a mission trip last fall. That was kind of cool. Well, we went shopping for clothes at the mall, but it felt like a <laughs> mission trip. <laughs> Speak a different language, cost a lot of money. I didn't understand where I was at. I thought it was just going to be she and I, but there's 47 of her best friends in the back of the car. I'm in the rearview mirror looking at her, and she's doing this to me. I can see you say nothing. <laughs> All my friends are back here watching say nothing. <laughs> and I hate myself because I speak fluent teenage girl. I said, I know. But, my heart is broken for you. <laughs> Dads, have you ever received this lecture from your teenage daughter? Friends are coming over, don't be stupid. <laughs> don't talk. Dad, you're not that funny. It's what I do for a living. Stop talking. <laughs> you and mom stay in the closet, don't come out. <laughs> if you want to communicate, write on a piece of paper, slide on the door. And don't jump up and down the couch and say, get down, funky white man. Don't do that. <laughs> Embarrassing things happen all the time. I tell people to embrace it. When dumb things happen, it's God working in your life. You ever pull up to a red light, car pulls up next to you, you start waving hard at the person? Huh? Men are really, we're committed. Mmm. Mmm. You ever had that person look at you and it's not who you thought it was? You look at them and say, just Jesus, take me home right now. <laughs> How many of you have gone from committed waiver to music conductor in a second? <laughs> Embarrassing things like that happen all Who owns a Bluetooth? Anybody own a Bluetooth? Get rid of that. That's of the devil. <laughs> Got a man walking at you talking. I think you're talking to me. I'm going to give you a bear hug. I don't know that you got a device in your head. Should be something that pops out the other ear that says, I'm not talking to you, keep walking. <laughs> I'm in the Atlanta Hartsfield International Airport. I'm in the bathroom. I'm the only guy in there. From the end of this bathroom, I hear someone say in the, in the stall, well, I think I'm going to need some help. I gave that about another 30 seconds. He said it again. I do. I think I'm going to need some help. <laughs> so I did the Christian thing. <laughs> Found his feet. A little slit in the door. <laughs> what do you need help with? I need for you to back up. <laughs> I went back in for seconds. I said, are you on the Bluetooth? He said, and the toilet. I'm going to call the police. Get back. <laughs> Dumb things like this happen all the time. It happens in every family. Kids, how many of you have weird parents? Look at them right now. If they're weird and they're here, look at them. Look at them. Now look at me. Listen carefully. That's you in about 25 years. <laughs> you may be embarrassed now, but years from now, you'll be so thankful that your parents are goofy. You will treasure it. Stories that you will pass on to your children, great-grandchildren. My mom says to my dad, we take him out to eat quite a bit, and, and not too long ago, my dad says to my mom, whoo, I think my butt fell asleep. Without missing a beat, she says, I know it did. I heard it snore twice. <laughs> We're in the post office. A woman behind the counter says, Mr. Dean, you want some forever stamps? She says, forever stamp? I'm 70 years old. I might be dead this weekend. How about a seven-hour stamp? That's what I want. <laughs> he loves it when I ask him, Dad, how'd you sleep last night? Like a cheerleader. I woke up at 2, 4, 6, and 8, and there's nothing to appreciate. Look at this. God bless you, friends. Love your family. Love God. Thank you.